Hello everybody, welcome back. This is Daisy. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make beautiful cake toppers with Cricut Design Space and Inkscape. And for this process, we're going to need cardstock. It can be plain cardstock with glitter, poster board, or even photo paper, double-sided adhesive foam dots or squares. Also, we're going to need a hot glue gun, double-sided tape or clear glue, and wooden or plastic cake topper sticks. Let's start. I already have one over here. I wanted to show you how it's going to look when we finish with the process. To add the shadow to the fonts, I use the free Inkscape program since Cricut Design Space doesn't have this option yet. I'm going to go to Inkscape and if you don't have this program yet, I recommend you to install it in your computer. It's free. Let's go to Inkscape.com. I'm going to leave the link on my video description so you have access to it. And here we'll give you the option to download it into your computer. Either if you have a Windows or a Mac. Just follow the instructions of how to install it. And remember, it's free. When we go to Inkscape, we're going to see a little rectangle in the center of the screen. We go to the lower corner on the right and we resize it. Now to insert text, we're going to press on this A here on the left and click inside the rectangle so we can start typing. Because whatever we're going to work with, it has to be inside this rectangle. Now let's go to the top left corner to search for our font. Since I'm making a fancy Nancy cake topper, I'm going to use this font. It's called Plaza and it's very similar to the fancy Nancy font. When I'm making these cake toppers, I like to write every name or every word in different lines. So it's easy for me to arrange them. Now that we have it ready, we select all the layers, all the lines. We go to path object to path, then object, select on group, then we go to path again, and we press union. Now we're going to path again and press link offset. Now it's ready for us to add the shadows or layers. You're going to see that little tiny diamond that little tiny diamond is very important. Please keep an eye on it. Now let's go to the bottom right corner to make it as bigger as we can. But we're still going to keep an eye on that diamond. Pick the color of your choice, then press on that little diamond and drag it to the outside. Now you can pick the size or the thickness of your offset. And if you need to add another layer in a different color, just leave it the way it is, go to path again and press link offset again. But let's don't forget to pick the color first. I forgot. But don't worry if you forget to change the color, you can always change it at any time. Pinch on that diamond and stretch it to the outside again. I recommend you to write down these steps so it will be easy for you to try it the first time. Now let's go back to the bottom right corner to resize it and make it a little smaller. Now go to the top left corner and select the first arrow. And we're going to select all the layers and put them inside the rectangle. We may resize it if we need. After this, we can save it in SVG format so we can open it in Cricut Design Space. Now go to File and save it in a folder that is easy for you to access. It's very important that you save it in plain SVG, otherwise you won't be able to open it in Cricut Design Space. Now it's ready to be opened in Cricut Design Space, but first, I'm going to show you how to add offset to a different font. It's the same process. Let me show you really quick. Let's press the 8 on the left 
and we're going to go on the top left corner to pick the font. I like this one that is called Bonita and I'm going just to write happy birthday and I'm going to type it in two lines. Let's arrange it just the way we did with the first one. Let's put it together so when we cut it, it cuts on one piece. Now let's select all the layers. Let's go to path, press object to path. Then let's go to object, click on group, then go back to path and select junior. Keep it selected and then go back to path and press link offset. Now grab the little diamond and stretch it out and change the color. Now, if you wanna add one or two more offset, you just leave it like that, go to path and press link offset again and change the colors either before or after. Now let's go to file and save it in a folder that is easy for you to access and don't forget to save it in plain SVG so we can open it in the sign space. And don't worry if you see these white spots. We can always clean them in Krika Design Space using the Couture option. Now let's go back to Krika Design Space. Next, go to Upload to insert the images that we saved on Inkscape. Let's go to Upload Image, Browse. Let's go to the folder where we saved the images. Select and Open. Continue. And we already have it here in SVG format and continue inserting. Now that we have them here, just select all the images and insert into the canvas. And these other images, we can find them in Google or Pinterest. And I'm going to show you how you can find them and save them in high quality. For example, I'm going to look for Fancy Nancy images. I just type Fancy Nancy PNG HD so we can find high quality images. Once you have the one you need, just select it and save it in a folder that is easy for you to access. And for fonts, I like to go to dafont.com where I can find a lot of beautiful free fonts. Just select the one you need, download it and to be able to use it on Cricut Design Space. Also, the font that I was using for the Fancy Nancy, I found it on Fonts Geek. These ones also are free, and the one that I'm using is called Plaza, that is similar to the Fancy Nancy font. Now let's go back to Cricut Design Space to continue with our cake topper. Now we're going to select the image that we brought from Inkscape and ungroup. Now we can work with each layer in case we need to clean them with couture. Sometimes it has little chips, little holes that we don't need and we can eliminate them with couture. Just go to the bottom right corner, select couture, and there it'll give you the option to eliminate little pieces or layers that you don't need. You can also resize it to make it easy for you to clean the image. Just press on the pieces that you need to eliminate or you can also put them back. Now let's put the layers back together and change color if we wish. We can add more details. In this one I'm going to put some flowers, paper flowers and butterflies. Next, we're going to create a layer that is going to go behind the little doll. Select the layers that we're going to print and cut and duplicate it. I'm going to put this one back. These ones are two separate images. I'm going to select both and press weld. And like this, the doll will be thicker in the cake topper. And the first one, if we want to print and cut together, we select both and press flatten and these two layers we're going to put them together using adhesive foam dots so it'll be thicker and before I forget this gray layer doesn't need to be print just cut so we're going to change the setting from printing to cutting we go to line type and select cut 
Now it's ready. Let's go to print and cut. I'm going to print this image in photo paper. Let's continue. Send to printer. This time I'm going to leave the bleed on. We select the printer that we're going to print this image. And if you don't have a printer, don't worry. You can save it to Microsoft Print to PDF and you can send it to print somewhere else and then come back and cut it with your Cricut machine. Kinkos or UPS are a good option. And to change the printer settings, we're going to press use system dialog so we can have a good high quality printing. So select use system dialog and print. And it's going to show you this box where you can change all the settings. Just go to preference and it will give you all the options. In this case, I'm using glossy photo paper. So I'm going to select it and then very important to change the quality setting. Let's select high, high quality. And let's make sure it's letter size paper, eight and a half by 11. Now press OK and print. And while it's printing, let's select the material that we're going to cut. The first one, like I mentioned before, is going to be glossy photo paper. So I'm going to go all materials, type photo, and it's going to give us the options for this kind of material. And we're going to use the fine point blade. And if we're going to cut different materials, we need to change the settings on each of the mats. For example, this yellow one is going to be poster board. So I go to browse all materials and look for the poster board. In this case is foil poster board. Select and continue. And we do the same with every mat that has different material. And when it's photo paper, it's better to wait a little so it dries before we cut. Also, let's make sure the paper is aligned in the cutting mat so we have a perfect cut. And let's start assembling the cake topper. For the two bottom layers, I like to use adhesive foam dots. And for the top layer, I am using double-sided tape or clear glue.
and to stick the rest of the stuff I used a hot glue gun. And here we have the layered cake topper. I just love the way it turned out. I hope you enjoyed my tutorial. And don't forget to subscribe and like my video. Thank you for your visit and I'll see you in my next tutorial.